Welcome to Insight, produced in collaboration with PBS 39 in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Today, we are chatting with David Mickenberg, President and CEO of the Allentown Museum of Art, who has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. And thank you, David, for joining us today. Pleasure to see you. So you've run a whole range of different museums. You've run right. university museums, you've run independent museums, small museums, larger museums. Talk about the, the place that the Allentown Museum of Art holds in your career and in this community? Well, Allentown Art Museum is 85 years old. Um, it was founded by the community, so it has a special relationship with the community. Um, it has um, been integrated into the community in various different forms, various different ways for now, uh, you know, eight, more than eight, eight decades, approaching our ninth decade. Um, it is an institution that is one of the Crest Museums in America, Inst institutions our size and cities our size don't usually have more than 50 crest paintings, uh, Italian Renaissance, German Renaissance, French Re Re Renaissance works that date anywhere from the 13th century straight through to the 18th century. Um, collections have been really brought together by people from the community and speak to the entire range of the history of art. They, we have works from Coptic Egypt, and we have works from Renaissance Italy, and we have works from late 20th century America. So it, it has a special place in, I think, the hearts of many people in Allentown and throughout the Lehigh Valley. It has a special place in terms of our impact on educational systems. And in the last 10 years, it really has had a very special place in, our, in terms of our impact on social services, health care, um, and other um, facets of the community that normally art museums in the past haven't gotten involved with. And this is the thing that is so interesting about this particular museum, because Allentown has such a rich history, and this whole region has a rich history of, of eras in which it was very prosperous and there were eras in which it was less prosperous. Right. You had, during those eras of prosperity, collectors who became internationally exposed, and they, through their generosity, wanted to build up the community. That mm -hmm. actually has a, a tremendous impact. These works it, at a place like the Allentown Museum have so much more impact than it, similar works in, in a major metro. Well, one of, the, one of the more fascinating things is during the periods of wealth here, whether it was the steel industry or the coal industry or other industries, the commissioning of works of art has been extraordinary. So in 1946, Franz Klein gets commissioned to do a mural at the American Foreign Legion Post. Um, which is now hanging in the museum. We, we bought it from the post and conserved it and then replaced it with a one-to-one -one reproduction of the work. The museum is in the middle of purchasing two Tiffany windows that are 14 and a half feet tall by five feet. Um, they're magnificent works, one's from 1913, one's from 1917. They're landscape works at the height of Tiffany's career, but they were purchased by the coal industry for a Presbyterian church in Pottsville. So what's out there in the community, not just what's in there in the museum, is rather extraordinary. And you get to actually be the art historian that you are in terms of taking a look at what works are, um, are distributed throughout the community mm -hmm. and considering whether uh, these works can be brought into the museum and, and exhibited to, uh, to greater impact. Well, one of the things that's been extraordinary for me is that um, the community has not only commissioned, but protected, cared for, and maintained those works. So the American Legion Post in Lee Hyden, um, when we opened up the mural, I think every resident of Lee Hyden was wrapped around the block and, 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 and up Linden Street waiting to get in to see it in the museum. But it was part of our respect to the community and respect for their years of caring for the work that we actually replaced it um, with a one-to-one -one reproduction in the bar um, where it was originally commissioned for. But I think the communities have cared for and made available some of the works. And it's, it's both a good story and a sad story. I think one of the reasons that they made available is that there are institutions that have come on hard times. Right. And so by purchasing the work from Lee Hyden, we actually purchased their heating system for the next 20 years. Uh, it went towards, towards that. Um, same thing with Church in Pottsville. Um, but Church in Pottsville actually had a lot of offers to purchase the windows for more money than they sold it to us for. And I think they did it for, for a number of reasons. One is they wanted to see it maintained in the public realm. Two, they, it was like one Presbyterian church giving to another Presbyterian church because we are housed in the 1905 
First Presbyterian Church of Allentown, uh, which was which was purchased by the museum in 1962, I think. Um, but there is this overarching care, concern, and recognition that that cultural heritage here and the heritage of the creative industries in the region is extraordinary. And so the museum plays a really interesting role of being not just an arbiter, but being a preserver and extending its collections to those things that have great significance that have been in the community for many years. <clears throat> when you look at the old post office building, which is now for sale in, in Allentown, there are 11 WPA murals in there of which we have some of the preparatory studies and preparatory paint, paintings by Beale uh, for those. But it's another place that is an amazing um, institution that uh, propagated the arts in the community, and those murals are all about the history of Allentown. How does it inform your exhibition um, strategies and your public programming strategies to be in this place in particular in contrast yeah. to, um, to other places that you've been? I've directed museums at Northwestern University and Wellesley College and, and the Taubman Museum. Civic museums or city museums have, I think, a very special relationship to the community. They have a very special relationship to educational systems. They have a very special relationship to healthcare systems. They exist in a way where our audience is constantly being expanded and redefined. And that impacts our exhibition program. Um, we also, we have nine public and private institutions of higher learning within a 20 mile radius of us. That's a whole nother level of responsibility and integration and collaboration that exists in terms of how we foster uh, more integration with the educational processes, with faculty, with students, with administrators. So we have a broad basket, I think, of responsibilities and a broad basket of impact that we can have with multiple constituencies. At the same time, Allentown, um, is a struggling community, uh, has been for years. What's going on with the NIS is extraordinary. I think what City Center has done in terms of the rebirth of downtown um, is a national story of, of really great leadership um, and great opportunities. And at the same time, the museum is working within those neighborhoods that surround the NIS, uh, where average income is low, diversity is exceedingly high, where the traditional donor base for the museum is now the minority population in the community, where there has been extraordinary growth in Latinx communities and Syrian communities throughout the, throughout the region, which gives us a whole other mission, direction, and potential impact to work, work with. It really does uh, make a startling point about how these, these towns a change and how their constituencies change, how their ethnic makeup right. changes and how the sensibility changes. How does that inform how you expose the collection? Because when you have uh, European uh, immigrants and the descendants of European immigrants um, uh, uh, who, who have founded these institutions, mm -hmm. and then you have their, their successor communities who are African-American communities, people who came over here on uh, slave ships and were marginalized, mm -hmm. and um, uh, Latino, Hispanic uh, communities that uh, came over for, for other purposes, Syrian communities. How does that, that shift how the museum actually functions to serve the changing complexion, literally right. the changing complexion of the community? So it's a great question, and I'll answer it in one way by saying, we're now doing what we should have been doing all along. Um, and that some of the broadening of the collections to include Latino artists throughout history, some of the contextualizing of our old master collections within a Latino context. And having so, discussions that we should have been having right. all along. Correct, and those discussions are with the community as a whole, so we've significantly increased the number of African-American artists in the collection, Latino artists in the collection. We're opening up an exhibition that is a result of a collaboration between Philadelphia Museum of Art, Art Bridges Foundation, and Terror Museum, which is looking at um, the history of the image of the Madonna in American art and tying in both our old master collections that were donated by Crass and Marsden Hartley as an example. And that builds a bridge to a community that 
did not have much exposure to the museum in the past. Translating everything into Spanish in the museum has been one of our major goals. Having community ambassadors on behalf of the museum really go out in the community and work with the community to understand we're a welcoming place changes our marketing strategies and our marketing focus. And that does um, so much credit to the founders of the institution, the board members, you and your staff, because rather than creating a, a barrier in which this, this temple of culture uh, becomes even more exclusive, right? The, the idea is, is, is that, no, as a matter of fact, we have to go the opposite direction because it enriches the, the institution and it, it, it right. I mean, that's what art is about. It is about enriching the community. It is about expanding visions. But it's also, a, it's also not about exclusivity, and, and I'm using that term in a little bit of a different way. But, but visual arts and museums can sometimes be uh, oh, bastions of exclusivity. Beyond a doubt. The heritage of, is exclusivity. The, um, what we fight against is the notion that we are exclusive. Um, we tell a lot of people, yes, we do make judgments about art. And maybe in that way we are exclusive because for every work of art we add to the collection, there are 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 that we're not adding to the collection, but we're not exclusive in who we serve. We're not exclusive in the ideas that we represent. We're not exclusive in being a welcoming environment to or many people. Or the art forms that you present. Right. How do you partner with organizations like Art Bridges, like the Terra Foundation, but with other organizations to serve your community, but also ensure that your works uh, the works that really ought to be seen also outside mm -hmm. of Allentown uh, are shared. I think we approach it on multiple levels. So the Allentown Art Museum has a robust loan program. Portions of the Crest Collection um, have gone out all over the globe since I've been here. Portions of the American Collection have gone out. One of the inhibiting factors for us in that is the strength of our collections and the works of art on paper and the textile collection. So we have 9,000 textile objects spanning the history of textiles. Um, those can't go out for more than three months or six months at a time at the most. The works of art on paper collection, the print collection, the photography collection have been extraordinary. Those can't go out. So um, when we send a painting out, it's sending something that is of major significance to the, to the collections. And so it has to be a really important exhibition for us to do that, and we've, we've done that. The, the PMA collaboration with Art Bridges and Terra is a relatively new phenomenon. I think it's great and has incredible potential to open up collections and diversify our collections. So whether we bring it in from PMA or elsewhere, uh, I'm hoping that all of the 10 institutions in, in Pennsylvania that are part of that effort um, will start collaborating and start working together in terms of lending their own collections. Everybody has really deep collections in some areas, not deep in others. So we, there are loads of things that we would love to expand. One of the things that the collaboration actually led us to is it enables us to tie the old master, well, within this iteration, to tie the old master collections together with the American collections by making a, a work of art from PMA available to us that under normal circumstances would never be available. David Mickenberg, thank you so much thank you. for sharing the work of the Allentown Museum of Art and thank you so much for your insights. Thanks a lot. It's a pleasure. It's nice seeing you again.